Um, so Gavin Clinch from IT Sligo, and uh, probably to uh, pick up on the on the last question that we had, this is really about an intervention to uh, support a transition um, from from uh, second to third level. So this this image really uh, looks at the uh, that, that that passage from second level to third level education is uh, is turbulent and is often hard to navigate. Um, and that the, having identified the, the, the problem, what we want to do is to try and make this uh, a more harmonious uh, transition. And in, in doing that, um, an intervention, um, taking it into the classroom, um, something that we can we can create um, for, for school leavers to actually, uh, or senior cycle students to engage with. So the, the, the working title for the, for the project then is a move to improve the transition from, from second to third level. Uh, at IT Sligo, we have been MOOCing. Um, we've, we've, we have a couple of uh, MOOCs in Lean Six Sigma, and we've had great success with that, particularly in terms of, uh, of completion rates. And um, we're looking at other MOOCs, particularly low-cost MOOCs. Uh, but what we didn't have really were expertise in some of the areas that we, uh, that we needed to actually deliver this, this MOOC. So, you know, we needed um, experts to row in with us in order to, uh, to really fulfill the potential of the, of the project. So the experts are from, from the Northwest and Midwest clusters. Um, we have um, Fiona Farr from, from UL. Um, we have Anne O'Keefe from Mary Immaculate, James Hoyne from Limerick IT, we have Karina Ginty here from GMIT, myself and Jennifer here from IT Sligo, and we have Mary Fleming and Nuna McGuinn from uh, NUIG, and Brian McGonagall from uh, Letterkenny. So we were really looked at what, what, do we, what is it that th these students need, what kind of supports do they need, what modules do they need, what, what um, instruction do, th do they need um, to, to make this journey. And this is the, I suppose there, there, are, there are possibly a number of MOOCs here. There's one particular MOOC which, is, which I've really outlined, and that's this um, MOOC for this transition from second to third. But included within the overall um, development of this project will be um, a, a, mo a module for, for parent transition. Um, so parents of, of school leavers, and those school leavers being first generation into higher education. Um, we're using the Aiming Higher publication from, from UL. That's going to be really what we're going to take and put it into an online environment. But if I look at my own institute in IT Sligo, 70% of our uh, undergraduates are now first generation students. So there's a transition that their parents also need to make. Uh, and then there's a, there are other modules supporting faculty, supporting people in our institutions um, to, to support the students. And, and also, and something that's been touched upon already, this transitioning of adult learners from the workplace into uh, full-time higher education. And clearly there are synergies with the two previous presentations, even in terms of um, international students that we might look at. So this is the, 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 the first module that um, I'm just going to, I'm not going to go through all the modules, I'm just, I've just brought up this slide on, on learning to learn. Again, a working title, we're, we're looking at what best to call um, the MOOC and what best to call this, this module. Um, so this is, uh, then there are a number of um, subsections to that. And that, that, that module, that, that last point of that module, 1.5, Students in Transition, we're, we're going to use a resource that's already been created recently by the um, Student-Led Learning um, Special Interest Group under, under Lynn, and that's a video there that we can, uh, we can take from that project and use. And that's, that's just one example of existing resources that, we, that we're going to look to use within the, within the MOOC. So we're looking at, um, in, in terms of the, of, of, the, of the model and the framework, we've looked at Jilly Salmon's uh, e-tivities. Um, she says, for learning to be successful and happy, participants need to be supported through structured developmental process. Um, so I'll show you the, the slide with the weeks, week zero being an orientation week, um, and that really ties in with stage one, access and, and motivation, and then weeks one to four, um, which we have. So two, three, and four. So we're scaffolding um, the, the students through the, through the MOOC 
and then into week five, which is the, the development of really we see as a sort of, it's not a module in itself, it's really about synthesizing the, the learning from the, from the previous four, four modules. So week zero and week five really wrap around the, the actual content itself. Uh, what, one, one thing that uh, Jilly Salmon talks about are e-moderators, and this is, this is kind of going to be important to us. Who will be the, the e-moderators? Um, and I'll come on to that uh, in, in a moment. So we, we've, we've talked about this being a, a, a MOOC, and uh, um, most people know about MOOCs and that the, the, the format of the MOOC, they're particularly um, ex-MOOCs. I know people are starting to talk about being a, well, I'm an ex-MOOC, C-MOOC kind of guy. But um, it's it, the, primarily they're, they're ex MOOCs and talking heads, and um, we're looking at uh, creating something a little bit different here, um, a, a different kind of menu. So this is, you know, we think of MOOCs and we think of uh, who, who participates in MOOCs. They're well qualified. They tend to be over 25, um, and they also tend to be male from from the research. Uh, but that's clearly not our demographic profile. Um, we're, we're looking at uh, a MOOC for 17 to 19 year olds um, come in the senior cycle and obviously a mixture of male and female. Uh, one of the other issues with MOOCs is that um, completion rates are pretty low and that's not something that is really going to be acceptable to our project. We need, we need to get people through to complete the project. So um, current average completion rate according to Katie Jordan, this is from our website a couple of days ago, is, is 15%. Um, our own MOOC that I mentioned, we had 48%. So clearly, there are a lot of MOOCs that have only 1% or 2% completion. So in order to, to address those issues I've just highlighted, um, the transition MOOC then will, will have two paths through it. The first path is, the, is really the, the self-directed route, um, signposted. And this is what you'd see in a Coursera FutureLearn MOOC. So it's, it's the basic model that they, that they use. But we're looking to create a, a second path, which is teacher facilitated, um, and so a change in, in, in MOOC design. Uh, and that really will allow for a, a flipped classroom, a flipped approach to, uh, to, to the learning, or um, to, a, to blended learning. So that the, uh, if the teacher will work with, with the students in class, they do a certain activity, and then they can act, inter interact with the, uh, the MOOC uh, offline in the evenings, part of their homework, and so we've, we're looking at creating a um, a pack for for teachers to work with. But the going back to the to the e-moderator, so the e-moderators could be uh, ourselves in IT Sligo, could be uh, members of the teaching co cohort, or it could even be um, as we run through the MOOC and through cycles of the MOOC, we could have um, second and third level students becoming e-moderators and supporting. Uh, the younger students coming through. So badges, um, this is another important component of, of the MOOC that we will use, um, use badges to incentivize completion. It might become some healthy competition within uh, classrooms or within schools to, uh, to collect the badges or to earn the badges um, for, for each of the modules and for the final completion. So the, the structure then, I don't know how much of that you can, you, you can see, but this, this, the structure is at the, at the top left we have uh, a landing page that's then mo moving on to introductions and to some overviews and, and this is in week, week zero, um, so sort of structured um, supporting them, giving them an introduction and getting them to understand how they navigate the MOOC. A lot of MOOCs are kind of straight in into week one and straight into your content and your, and your classes. This one is more... Um, and some MOOCs do have now uh, an orientation week. And then as, you, as we come down here on the, on the left-hand side, we get to a point where we've got these two options, these two pathways, one for the self-directed learner, um, and the other one is the more structured one and, and requires the facilitator. So in order to, uh, to do this, we had to look at the, the, the different platforms that were available to us, the different MOOC platforms. Uh, we like the FutureLearn model. I think it's predicated on good, sound pedagogical thinking, but it doesn't allow us to really create the uh, the pathways that we want and to structure it the way that we want to do. So I, I mentioned our, our other MOOCs in IT Sligo. They're they're on the Moodle platform. Um, 
examples of where Moodle is being used as a MOOC platform, sailor.org, 90 plus courses um, on, on Moodle, Moodle being customized. Uh, for those of you familiar with Moodle, stripping out a lot of uh, what is there, particularly the, the text-based uh, elements, um, and, and making it um, a lot more attractive and appropriate to the, to the way we want to design it. Uh, another example, this is a recent development in the Fachhochschule in uh, Lübeck in, in Germany, and they've taken uh, Moodle and they've developed it into uh, Moin, which is, as they call it, German, a German greeting. So the next um, phase, really, of the, of the project is to, is to pilot. Uh, we're going to take week zero and week one learning to learn, and we're going to pilot that in schools in, in October of this year. So work is ongoing in terms of developing uh, that, that first module. Um, and we're, we're reaching out to uh, a school per institute, so seven schools plus a cohort of undergraduate students, which will be then within the institute that we can work with. And then from, from that, we really need to do, uh, to do surveys and, and interviews with the, with the students to find out what, what were the issues, how did they find it. We've got two particular paths. Some of them will be self-directed, some of them will be facilitated. Um, we also wanted uh, an international advisor to, uh, to review, um, and identify and assess the MOOC. We decided not to go with her in the end, but we got this guy, uh, Dave Cormier, who uh, coined the term MOOC and he's the, uh, in charge of retention and student development at the University of Port, uh, Prince Edward Island in Canada. So progress, it's a two-year project, and um, we're probably 25, six months in, so we're about 25% of the way there. So we've got a, a number of pieces of the picture that are coming together. Um, I suppose the uh, you know, timelines have been dictated by a school calendar, um, autumn being uh, a good time to engage with the, with the schools, and, and not obviously over, over the summer or even uh, earlier in the year. Um, institution procurement rules have, have held us up a bit as well with Jennifer here but uh, we haven't had it for very long and that's uh, as, a, as a result of um, slow procurement processes uh, and delays there. Three minutes for three, three benefits. Um, so an, an open nationally available MOOC, I mean there are 150,000 um, senior cycle students 50,000 coming in every year. Um, we see the advantages or the benefits being pre-development of skills to better manage this transition. That seems to be a very important intervention here. Um, the development of a more engaged student when they come into uh, to third level. Um, if, and this is obviously on the basis that they, that they can engage with this MOOC prior to starting um, in the institutions. And, and higher retention rates of uh, of students in third level. And like Tom, uh, I sneaked in a fourth one, but I just didn't put a number on it. Um, we'll also create better linkages with the schools and further education institutions. We're so sneaky, Tom, aren't we? <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, you know, promotion is, is important. A lot of people hear about MOOCs and they're circulated through email and uh, through social media. We also, we will be using the Institute of Guidance Counselors, um, specialist teachers in, in, in the schools. Um, Karina has a database of key contacts in schools and further education colleges, students' union, um, and HE retention officers as well. Okay, I'm in time.